Um, am I, I don't know. I mean, we don't hang out, but I consider you a dear friend. I don't know if that's legit. Well, if appreciate you that. do, not oh, you, Lance no. Army. I'm talking oh, about <laughs> Thank my you, I appreciate in, oh, in me. studio <laughs> guest, Mike Balmelli from okay, the Wapato okay. School District. Um, <laughs> but I just, I do. I just, can a guy say this? I adore this guy. He's just the coolest. <laughs> well, we are dear friends, we, and we have been since, what, back? I don't even know if we want to say, do we? Double-digit decades. Yes. Right? Let's, yes. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, but Mike is back uh, to talk about the Cultural Unity Fair, and he brought the cheese, the big cheese. Erin Gonzalez is here. She's the uh, organizer of uh, Wapato's Middle School Cultural Unity Fair, and as I recall last year, another victim of COVID-19, right? And so, Erin... Uh, um, we're going to do two fairs in one this year to make up for, no, make up for <laughs> last year. What do you have planned? Because we're still not a, you know, a hundred percent back to normal. So right. a bigger job for you, but it's important to, uh, you know, it's how long has Wapato been doing this forever, right? This should be 39 years, but 30. this will be the 38th since we had to skip last year. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a tradition that you don't want to just walk away from. And so you're not. Um, and so let's remind people what, on a normal year, mm -hmm. historically speaking, what has the uh, Cultural Unity Fair been like? So on a normal year, the doors to the middle school would open at 4.30, mm -hmm. and then people would enter into our gym. And in the gym, there would be five different booths set up, one booth for each of our cultural clubs. And each of those clubs would be serving five to six items from their culture. And so it's just this big food fair. People walk around with tickets, and you exchange tickets for food items. Now, clubs, wow. so there are actual groups within mm -hmm. the middle school that, that meet at certain times mm -hmm. and talk about things important to their cultures, or how does that, what's the background yeah. for all of that? Yeah, so we have AYO, which is our Asian Youth Organization, Filipino club in the building. We have Mecha Club, Native American Club, Euro Club, and Cub Club. It's like the school spirit club. Cool. So they meet throughout the year, and then each of those same clubs um, puts together performances. So in the gym, you would have all the food. In the cafeteria on stage would be performances from each club running from 4.30 to 7 o'clock at night. So in the cafeteria where you'd normally have food, you're <laughs> yeah. having entertainment. Yeah. And like in the gym where out. you'd normally be entertained, <laughs> you're having food. Is that Makes what you're telling me? Makes perfect sense, right? I like it. That's, that's my you weren't kind. supposed to point that out. It's my kind of setup, though. <laughs> you weren't supposed to. Well, they, to me. Supposed they do to get to bring their food with them to the cafeteria. Okay, that to, watch the to watch the performance. So you basically uh, do it a big old paper plate and just load yeah. it up as you go. And, yep. um, and tickets are, I suppose, really reasonable, but the money's go to support the activities of these clubs or how, what is it how does that work? um the money brought in from cuff basically funds cuff for the next year so there isn't much profit out of it but enough to run it 39 years in a row wow that's uh, that's cool all right so we uh getting those masks this year that kind of you can pull a string and they open up so you can slip <laughs> a spoon in or how, what are we doing this year so this year instead of bringing people into the building we're going to bring the food out to them so we're going to run a drive-through cultural oh, cool. unity fair and so we've been really trying to push the pre-sales of tickets so that people can get their tickets early and know that for sure they will have a plate ready for them. And so because we offered so many different food items in the Culture Unity Fair, we decided just to do a dinner sampler plate. Uh, okay. And we picked the favorite item from each of the clubs. And then we have a dessert sampler plate. And so you can purchase one or two or both or all. And then we know that cheese zombies are kind of a crowd favorite. Who so doesn't love a good we're zombie? We're offering cheese zombies a la carte, and a salmon will be a side item as well. Super. Uh, yeah. So what's a, if I if I want to drive through and get the pre-made plate? <laughs> what's that going to cost me? Um, a dinner plate would cost you fourteen dollars, and you would get a cheese zombie, a piece of fry bread, pizza, two tacos, and two lumpia. Wow. Nice. Yeah. All right. So that sounds fantastic. How do we make these? advanced sales how do we let you guys know that we want in and um you need to come into the wapto middle school office to purchase your ticket oh you do so it's an yes. actual in on-site in-house yep. kind of purchase yes All so right. this week we have conferences at the middle school this week so our office is actually open in the evenings so tuesday and thursday you could come in until five and then wednesday they'll be there till seven okay. besides this week the hours are seven to three i want to know about the performances 
I mean, what are the yeah. give us the names of the clubs or the, you know what, what and what kind of performances are we going to be able to see? There's no newsman well, club thank that's going to sit there and pretend <laughs> to be Walter Cronkite. That's not happening. This year's performances will be a little bit different as well because normally our students would have started practicing from the beginning of the school year up yeah. until now. Um, and we haven't been able to do that. So what we're doing this year is I've put out a request to our community to send in as many old cuff videos as they can because this started back in 82. Yeah. And so I've been collecting VHS tapes from mm. people all over. And I just got a huge delivery yesterday. There was like 1984, 87, 89, <laughs> 93. Um, at one point, our performances had taken us to the Capitol Theater. So we used to sell out the Capitol well, Theater I remember that. three yeah. nights a week. And so I got 1997. We were there. I got that cassette tape yesterday. Cool. It's kind of funny because uh, the students see my VHS and they don't uh, know uh, what it is. Yeah. And where do you put oh, it? Oh, get out of here. Yeah. They don't know what no. it is. Nope. And oh what, my what God. happens if that ribbon breaks? Oh, my yeah, then God. Was a Who do we know I that had. used to edit that ribbon? Uh, <laughs> right. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. geez. So, uh, uh, the, um, the, so the performances will be shorter? I mean. So uh, we uh, won't have any live performances. Oh, but no, I, oh, okay. I okay. will take all of those. The plan is to get all of those videos digitized oh. and then those will oh. be made available to the community the night of cuff oh, so we'll cool. launch a website and they can go on and oh, probably yeah. search for the year they were there yeah. or their kids cool. were there yeah, yeah. legacy box yeah. anyway how are you watching these i have to ask <laughs> I, I borrowed a vcr from our library oh, <laughs> went to the smithsonian a vcr <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yes. How many VCRs were in your library? <laughs> there were a few. I could really? only find cables to one. Okay. So we've got one VCR working, and then I have a coworker who's getting them all online for yeah. me. Excellent. That great is idea. really cool. Great idea. Yeah. A great way to look back. <laughs> awesome. That's I even great. had someone drop off an episode of Real People where they had interviewed our Real principal people. back wow. in, I think, 84, and they talked about the history of Cuff. And so it was. I have that episode wow. that will be on the website nice. as well. So in a, it's your kind of uh, it's kind of like the state fairs drive through fair food thing in a mm -hmm. way, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, excellent. Um, so the actual event itself is when April first. April. Thursday, April first. Are you 1st. fooling, or is it <laughs> really then? So my yeah. students said the same thing. Am I going to buy a ticket and show up, and there's no event? <laughs> That's right. No. Psych. No. no. We just always do the last Thursday right before spring break, and this is where it so ended this year. April first. Yep. Starting uh, at what time of the day can I show up to be first in line? Well, if you have pre-purchased your tickets, you will get to go into your own line, the express lane. Oh, great. great. If you're waiting to purchase them that day of, there will be separate lines. Um, but the, I mean, the line opens probably around 4 to That's get in it, but to start serving food would be 4.30. 4.30. Well, I would say you've done a fab job trying to, you know, salvage from the ashes of COVID uh, a really <laughs> cool event. Yes. Especially with that historical stuff. That's got to be just wonderful. Yeah. yeah. It's a great idea. And, you know, um, I think everybody's feeling like, can we just get back to normal at some point, right? I yeah. Mean, after a uh, really a year of this, I was just reflecting last weekend that last weekend was the last weekend before we canceled, started canceling school last year. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, with Aaron's, you know, creativity, I think this brings some normalcy back to some of the stuff that we're doing sure. in the Wapto School District. And we're going to be able to see what normalcy was with these great videos. So yeah. Yeah. that's that's awesome to get everybody pumped and primed and still the same great food. Um, well, let's take just a minute because we've got a couple, about two minutes left. Uh, what's it like teaching now under these circumstances? Uh, you're back in the building. You're working with middle schoolers. Mm -hmm. They seem to be, to me... Um, I mean, I wouldn't teach middle school for his money. Um, <laughs> for his money. <laughs> I'm telling you. Uh, so what's that like? Uh, everybody's wearing masks. Are you six feet apart? Is all of yeah. that stuff going on? Yep. Everyone has masks on six feet apart. I think the biggest class size is maybe 15 students mm -hmm. at a time, if your room can hold that many. Mm. Um, but the kids are super excited to be back. They're only back two days a week in the building. So they'll come either on Monday, Tuesday or they're in a Thursday, Friday group. So and then, in order to divide the population mm -hmm. in half for being there. Yep. And then you have a separate tier of teachers online, right? Yeah, I think we have 16 teachers in our building alone at the middle school who have stayed online because of the number of students who wanted to stay online. Mm -hmm. So instead of teaching you know, virtually and in person at the same time, there's a group of staff who stayed with them. 
And as a result of that, I mean, these kids go back home for two days, and are they online in other classes those two days that they're home? Or um, not in a live Zoom, but they have asynchronous work. So I see them for two days, and then I assign them things they need to be doing on their three days at home. Okay, and they're not online then with other teachers no. teaching them. So it's really a two-day work week, which I love the idea of. <laughs> I know Spain's looking at four days. Uh, you know, look at the good folks at Wapato. You guys are cutting edge. Yeah. You're down to two. Michael, anything else that you want folks to know well, about? you know, we talked about this a little bit before we went on, and that is kind of, I think there may be a, a, a misconception out there by some who may not have st students going to school in the Valley somewhere, and that is we've had kids back in our building, and we've been teaching kids in classrooms since like early September and we've had and that started with small groups and then we followed Yakima Health mm -hmm. District guidelines throughout to bring more kids back. We now have, you know, preschool through high school kids back in Wapato and many of the districts around the valley have that. You know, one thing that's kind of hanging people up to bring more kids back is this six foot distancing thing and we'd really, really hope that, you know, we hear some buzz out of the C D C that they may reduce that to three feet for for schools and and hopefully that'll happen and it'll trick it d trickle down into the districts in our area because that would that would certainly yeah. help in getting more kids back in the classroom. I heard some fairly uh, scolding conversations saying they've known it's been three feet for a long time and uh, have you know basically doubled the problem for space for teachers and other uh, businesses and what have you because of the, that distance. Well, we're delighted you guys are back in action, starting a new streak, a new run of 39 years <laughs> yep. or more. You're going to be here for all of them, aren't you? To oh, make sure every that single they, one. Make sure they stay <laughs> like they need to stay. Um, Mike Bomelli, uh, Aaron Gonzalez, guys, thanks for coming in so much. Uh, get your tickets. Get them. Try the delicious food that the, these clubs have uh, worked so hard to put together for you. Enjoy the videos. And... Uh, and we've been hearing we've been hearing from the president and others how important unity is. Here is a group that's been pushing unity and making it happen for decades, and they're back. So good on you guys. That's awesome. <laughs> Appreciate the time.